As we mentioned, President Biden is in Battleground, Pennsylvania today, kicking off what is a three-day campaign tour in the key state. And joining me now is the Pennsylvania Democratic Senator, John Fetterman. Senator Fetterman, I appreciate your being with us. As we said, the president is in your home state, the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, for this several-day swing. His path to re-election is essentially non-existent without the Keystone State. What should be his pitch yeah. to build on his slim 2020 margin there? Well, well, of, well, of course. Um, uh, I've always said this for years, that Pennsylvania picks the president. And I want to point out that Joe Biden is the only American that actually beat Trump in Pennsylvania. He did that in 2020, and he's going to do that in 24. It's going to be close. I've been very clear about that. But, you know, Trump is not able to win Pennsylvania over Joe Biden. And that's why Joe Biden is vis visiting Pennsylvania and he's going to again and again and again. And he is going to make the kinds of investments to make sure that he carries the, the Keystone State. Mr. Senator, I, I want to put up some numbers for our audience from a recent New York Times Siena poll. It says that 42 percent said that Donald Trump's years in office were mostly good for America. Just 25 percent said the same of President Biden. What's your sort of take on that? How do you explain <laughs> that? And how does President Biden win when more folks, at least according to this poll, think Mr. Trump did a better job? Well, I mean, I, you know, if if polls were were right, uh, I would have uh, I would be home and you'd be talking to some weirdo from New Jersey talking about Pennsylvania and Trump's uh, uh, opportunities again. So the poll the polls uh, predicted that I was going to lose uh, or anything, and I'm not worried about these polls as well too. Uh, what is going to happen is that it's going to be two very stark choices right now. And if anyone honestly looks back on what it was like four years ago, we couldn't even be doing this right. Now. Now we would all on a lockdown as that as well. And we had COVID uh, tearing through our nation. And now over 1 million Americans were claimed by COVID. So if you really s significantly think that, that Trump was doing a better job, I, I don't believe most people are not going to do that. Yeah, it is a good reminder of where we were. If you ask how, if you were better off four years ago, four years ago, you were in lockdown at your home. In your campaign, you ran against someone who was a very well-known public figure, Dr. Oz. You still work to shape voter perceptions of him, and you did it early. What advice would you give to President Biden and his team right now to try to do the same as it relates to Mr. Trump? Well, I, I don't I don't offer advice for on anything other than fashion. And uh, why would I have any kinds of advice for Joe Biden? Joe Biden already beat the brakes off of Trump in, in Pennsylvania. And then they, you know, Trump tried to claim that there was voter fraud in anything. And there was vote, uh, vote, uh, voter fraud in Pennsylvania. And that was six uh, Republicans. And they voted for Trump. Uh, they used the ballots of their dead mothers to vote for that. And they were all caught. They were all prosecuted and convicted. And now they're on probation and now. So it's going to be a safe, secure, election here in Pennsylvania, just like it's always been. And uh, no matter what he says, uh, it's a fact that Joe Biden carried Pennsylvania and he's going to do that again. Senator Fetterman with a hat tip to the black hoodie, your fashion choice for today. I do want to ask you about a more serious topic, well, of, of course. course. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do want to ask you about foreign policy, if I can. Following the Iranian attack on Israel over the mm -hmm. weekend, you told CNN that you disagreed with President Biden urging Israel not to retaliate. What do you say to national security officials who say that they are concerned that an Israeli response against Iran could provoke a larger war? Well, no. I, what, what I do, what I do believe is, is that we need to to follow Israel on that. We don't have to agree with it, but we need to stand with Israel uh, in that situation. He is our special ally, and it's the democracy there in the Middle East as well. And we can never forget that all of this, all the tragedy, the death, and the destruction, is all because of Hamas and what they've done on October 7th as well. Again, and to anybody watching, it's like in in doubt, lean on and this and decide with and standing with democracy and our key ally, Israel. But to be clear, uh, though you support standing with our key ally, Israel, doesn't the U.S. have some, some stakes here, given the fact that if this were, if Israel were to, to respond in some sort of rash way, perhaps even attacking within Iran, well, that really could spark a wider war that would draw the U.S. into it more, further? 
Well, I, I, I think Israel is going to respond in an appropriate way. Uh, I, I don't expect it's going to be anything drastic or anything like that. But let's really talk about that, that Iran launched, what, two to three hundred drones and other kind of missiles as well, too. And this is that, if anything, that just only underscores why we need to lean in and stand with Israel on that. It's it's just been very clear for, for me. And it's OK if somebody disagrees with that. That's 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 reasonable. I just don't think it's really controversial to anybody to, to lean in on with, with Israel. Let me ask you if I can very quickly about some politics back in your home state. I want to ask you specifically about the divide on this issue within your party, inside your state. The Democratic Congresswoman Summer Lee is facing a primary challenge over her calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. You've endorsed her. But do you think she could lose this primary if she does not change her position on Israel? Well, uh, again, uh, of course, uh, Congresswoman Lee and I agree and intersect on some issues and we disagree on others. And, and I respect and, and I think diversity of thoughts uh, and opinions in our party is, is healthy. And I'm absolutely fine with that. She happens to be my Congresswoman. Uh, and, and it's really how this is going to go. I, I don't have any opinion on how the race will go. But I will say she is popular and she works hard. And I don't know how that's going to be up to the voters to decide. But let me ask that very quickly, if I can follow up. What makes you comfortable endorsing someone who has said that Israel is committing war crimes, as she described it, in Gaza? Well, and like I said, it's, it's thought diversity as well. I don't happen to agree with, with the president in every situation on every view, but I'm absolutely 10,000 uh, supportive of him. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about how dangerous it is to have this uncommitted or to abandon Biden kind of a thing. And I also be clear that if anyone wants to engage in that, you want to play with that kind of fire, then you really need to own the burn if that allows Joe Biden to lose and have the, the worst president of all time giving an opportunity for a second term, which is obviously very uh, committed and, and absolutely uh, obsessed with uh, revenge. Senator John Fetterman of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we appreciate your time. Thanks for speaking with us today. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.